huge crap, this is the fun stuff. When I hit this button, I go into La La Land. And all this other stuff is in La La Land. The signal splits to another loop. My, my friend and guitar tech, Brian Brown, who I want to acknowledge, who helped set all the stuff up and is a, is a genius and somebody who is so important to me. Anyway, we worked on all this together. <laughs> but um, what Digcrap does is this. It gives me access to all this stuff. So the first thing would be the, you know, the looper. So you can make a loop while we're playing, you know, and you can add to it, of course. You know, you add another layer. You put the little bass in there. Or you can put the high on there. Now what I'm doing is, this button allows me to stack on top of the loop, right? This button stack. And this button gives me vibrato, and you can speed up and slow down the vibrato. So if I go, if I go like that, it speeds up. Now this, which also isn't digi crap, is a longer echo, so I can go. Or you can put a bass line on, like sort of like. You hear the bass line now. Now, if you want, which I do a lot, you can make the whole thing go backwards. And then you can add forwards to it or backwards. So I could put, I could lay forward on top of backwards. That's forward again. Then you can play along with it. And then people will probably recognize this one, which I do all the time. <laughs> and then you can hit DigiCraft and it all goes away because all that stuff is over there. And if you push the button again now... It's, it's still there. Or, this is even better, you can stop it and it's still in the thing. And if you want to hear it once, Brian built this custom pedal for me that goes over here called Once. <laughs> And I hit it, and the, the loop goes once with my left foot. And he specifically built it so I could do this. I went. See, then I have to keep it. It only goes with my foot now, so I go. It was actually specifically built for that song for heavy things. But now that I have it, I do that all night long. I've told you now about every single effect I have except this, which is a DM2000. That was one of the first digital delays ever made. So I bought it, that's it. So a lot of my gear is like really old. I don't get much new gear, barely ever. You know, that's from when I was in high school. You know, um, I had that. I had this from Nectar's, the Alesis Microverb. I don't even know if you can get them anymore. This thing was built in the 80s, the amps from the 80s. I actually still have the receipt for the amp. Uh, it was such a big deal when I got that amp, I remember. Same wah-wah pedal, tube screamers, but uh, you know, the Leslie's old, so 
This came out the year they invented it. And you know, what happens with this gear is that they, they fix it. The second model is supposed to be better and it always makes it worse. You know, and so same thing with this. They tried to fix the whammy pedal and the old ones are so much better than the new ones. Most of the time I use it like an actual whammy pedal. So I only use it for a half step, like. Like not a full swoop. Just a little bit. You know, like as if it was a whammy pedal. Do you sometimes play songs differently? Pedal wise. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, there's no, there's definitely no plan on, on the pedals. As a matter of fact, that's what I meant about why it's so important to get really familiar with your gear. There's a couple of times when I use the same thing, you know, like maybe at the beginning of God of Jabu, you know, the. But I used to do that for 15 straight minutes. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. <laughs> but no, I don't know. I, no, you make it up as you go along. As a matter of fact, I got this TC Electronics Echo just for a tiny little echo on the guitar, which just is a basic thing that sounds good. And then when we were in the storage jam, I finally started fooling around with it. Because we were fooling around inside of that storage box, it kind of, I think, reignited everybody to open our minds a little bit. I think all four of us. You know, because we were switching instruments and playing two drums and all this stuff. And because it never moves, like I can, I know where it all is. So I can pretty much just stand like this and get at all of it while I'm singing or something like that. You know, it's like within a fraction of an inch every single night. Everywhere we go, it's exactly the same. Including my keyboard monitor. You know, I get all my keyboards from that speaker. And I want it coming from the piano. I don't put anything but vocals in front of me. The keyboard's supposed to sound like it's coming from the keyboard. The bass or the drums. I have my own drum speaker right there so that it sounds like it's coming from over there and you can turn stuff down. If you start getting sound coming from every direction, it just turns into a big mess. So the most important thing about my rig is being able to hear fish and, and obviously I can hear the bass because it's... So basically you hear the imaging of the band. I hear the imaging as a band where it is. And it helps immensely you really don't want to listen to yourself ever. It's crucially important to hear what somebody else is playing. And the theory is that if you just listen, you'll never run out of ideas. There's a million ideas. I, I, I don't need to come up with an idea ever. Some, one of these three guys is, always has a musical idea that I can cop off. A lot of times what'll happen is I'll hear one person, I'll be like, well, that's easy to hook up with them because, because they're playing out. Mike's playing out. So my, my brain will instantly go, to, oh, I wonder what Paige is doing. So then I'll go like this. I walk over here and now I can hear the keyboard. You know, or even if I tilt like this just a little bit, I can hear the keyboard. You know, or if I go like this, the drums are right there. Or even when Paige is playing a solo and I'm playing rhythm guitar, I'm actually listening a lot to the hi-hat, which is coming out of there. So, because I want to be really tight with the drums when Paige is doing a solo. So I go back over here and like I can get right in on the hi-hat. And I can, I can look at Paige, I can hear him and I can do that. Boom, I can go this way. I probably end up facing this way a lot for that reason, because I'm, you know. It's pretty comfortable up here. Everything works, we have a great crew. Anything you want to tell me about? Anything else? Because I didn't say enough. <laughs> yeah.